Chapter 84, The Header The discovery and formation of the United States as the seat of Satan. War is further condemned as the wickedness of political leaders. The American Indians are gentle and peaceful at first because of the teachings of the three Nephites who are named. Christopher Columbus was not the man mentioned by Nephi in the Book of Mormon. 1. And now... I shall return once again to the beginning of the nation which shall be known as the United States of America, and show unto those of you who shall receive these things which have been sealed, the easy way that Satan shall have convincing power over the hearts and minds of all the people of the earth, convincing them that his plan is more righteous than the eternal plan of the Father. 2. And now... The United States shall not be the only nation upon the earth that shall follow after the plan of Lucifer. For all nations shall be under his power. But this nation shall become the most powerful nation among all the nations of the earth. And its influence shall be felt in all parts of the earth because of the beast and the foundation of the number of its name that shall be set up in the latter days in this great nation. 3. And all the economies that shall be set up by all the nations of the world shall be affected by this beast. And nothing that shall be done in the world regarding the monetary affairs among the children of men shall be done without the consideration and control of this beast, who shall be the fiduciary of the number of the beast throughout the whole world. 4. And now, it is easier for Satan to concentrate upon one nation and bring it under his control than it is for him to control all the nations of the earth in all things. 5. For behold, those in the spirit world who follow Satan, and his plan are a finite number of souls whose works, according to the inspiration that they can give unto the children of men in mortality, can be better used on a small nation of people who are desirous to follow Satan, than they can be used on a nation of many people. 6. Nevertheless, it doth not take a large nation to control the rest of the world, but it taketh a powerful nation, and this power is in the strength of a nation, or in its ability to kill others, or defend itself by force from another. 7. Behold, in all the kingdoms of Satan, the means of force, which is concentrated in its armies and its navies and in any organization that it created to wage the sin of war, shall always be a measure of its power. 8. But a nation under God attributeth its power to the righteousness and the peace and the happiness that is found among its people. Yea, nowhere in a nation under God can there be found weapons of warfare, for they shall not exist. 9. And for this reason it hath been written that when the Lord cometh in the glory of the Father to establish his kingdom upon the earth, it is written, saying, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. 10. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks, and nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. 11. And now, this is the plan of the Father, yea, this is what the Lord shall teach, even the sharp sword with two edges that proceedeth forth out of his mouth which are his ways, and his past that he would have the children of men follow according to the eternal plan of the Father that shall give unto them happiness. 12. And many of the wicked in the latter days shall believe that it is necessary that they build up a great means of force and strength that they might protect their nation from other nations that might come upon them. 13. Now, this thing is that which Satan would have them believe, so that he might have the means of force to conquer any who come against him, and that he might put down any usurpations of his power and authority throughout the earth. 14. And in the latter days, the United States of America shall be the most powerful nation upon the earth, and it shall also be the most wicked because it followeth in every way the plan of Lucifer, and persecuteth those who would follow the plan of the Father 
even those who would sue for peace and righteousness throughout the earth. 15. For it shall come to pass that all those who rise up against this great nation shall be subdued by its great armies and navies and means of force. 16. Even those who are its citizens who sue for peace and who petition the government against war shall be overcome by the passions of the wicked who think that the killing of their brothers and sisters of other nations is justifiable to save their own lives. 17. And this great patriotism shall blind the minds and harden the hearts of the citizens of this nation. And it shall come to pass that they shall put their trust in their leaders and cast out from among them all those who speak against its power and its glory. 18. And there shall be exceedingly powerful advancements in the weaponry of war of this nation. And its power shall be glorified by these great weapons, which have been built to murder through war any that speak against the beast. 19. And the leaders of this nation shall take pride in their weapons of war, and their names shall adorn them. And the people shall worship their leaders whose names shall adorn these great machineries of death that they shall cause to be built up among them. 20. And woe unto the leaders who have been sanctioned by the beast to stand among the people, and gain their trust, and who use this trust to wage war against the children of God. Yea, ye shall be in a state of exceeding torment and misery as ye watch from the spirit world, and witness the great destruction of your brothers and sisters, as the weapons which bear your names destroy them, and maim them, and blind them, and cause all manner of destruction to them. 21. And in your name shall these great weapons go forth, and cause great turmoil throughout the earth, and they shall be the cause of many widows, and orphans, and homelessness, and poverty, and all manner of affliction among the children of men throughout the world. For in your ignorance ye worship the beast, and ye destroy in the name of Satan. 22. And ye shall fulfill the prophecy of John, in which he hath described you as a great beast who hath two horns like a lamb, and speaketh as a dragon. 23. For ye shall pretend that the wars that ye wage are wars for the sake of peace and righteousness, like unto a lamb, who is gentle in nature, but possesses its horns only to dissuade its enemies from harming it thinking that these horns, which are on the head of the lamb, can inflict pain if it were attacked. 24. But ye are the beast, and speaketh by the mouth of Satan, which is the dragon, and all the wars that ye shall wage in the latter days shall be wars to protect your riches, and those things which ye have received from Satan, because ye worship him, and follow his broad way. 25. And all of your leaders and your politicians shall be from those who are rich, whose interests are served by the wars that they shall wage to destroy the other nations of the earth. 26. And woe unto all those of you who support your leaders in the spread of war and misery throughout the earth, because ye think in your hearts that ye are more righteous than the rest of the world. 27. Behold, the Father loveth all of his children throughout the whole earth, and hath he not commanded you to love one another, and do unto them what ye would have them do unto you? 28. And what say ye if one of your neighbours, who is much stronger than you, cometh into your house, and commandeth of you that ye worship as he worshippeth, and that ye follow in his ways, because he believeth that his ways are more righteous, and that your ways are wicked, and that if ye are left to pursue your ways without his intervention, then ye will destroy his righteousness, and cause his children to suffer? 29. Yea, what say ye if he cometh into your house with his great weapons, and subdueth you because ye cannot stand against his strength and power? Would ye think that this neighbour is righteous? Would ye do this to your neighbour? 30. And what of the great commandment of the Father that ye should love your enemies, and do good to them that hate you, and persecute you, and despitefully use you, that ye may all be the same children of the one and only true God of heaven and earth, who is your eternal Father? 
do ye not understand this commandment and realize that he hath given this commandment unto you for your happiness? 31. Behold, it shall come to pass that your pride and your arrogance and your hate for your enemies shall be the means of your own destruction in the latter days. 32. And when ye should have been constructing houses and gardens and naming these things after your leaders, which would do good unto the people of the world and would not destroy them, yea, instead of doing these things, ye shall be destroying the fathers and mothers and the sisters and the brothers, the uncles and the aunts of your enemies. 33. And when ye have destroyed them, then their sons and daughters and their sisters and brothers and their nieces and nephews shall rise up against you and hate you. 34. And because ye are more powerful than they shall be, they shall not come up against you in open, but shall come in among you in those parts of your society that are weak and vulnerable to their attacks. 35. And in spite of your technology and your great weapons of destruction, in their vengeance they shall begin to kill your children and your brothers and your sisters and your loved ones. 36. And now, do ye not know that I have seen the same thing pass among my own people, the Nephites? Do ye not know that I not only speak these things as a prophecy concerning you, but that I speak these things from my own experience? 37. Behold, the Nephite people were a great nation, and they had pride in their nation and in their leaders who led them into war against the Lamanites, who they looked upon as their enemies. 38. And now, if a leader would go to war with another nation, then this leader should send forth his own children to fight for the peace, which he supposeth justifieth this war. 39. For behold, my father hath sent me forth to fight the Lamanites, and he hath given up his own life fighting, not for the sake of righteousness, but so that he could live another day. For at the present time the Nephites are not righteous, and we have no hope in the war which we have waged against the Lamanites. 40. And if a leader is not willing to send forth his own sons and daughters and sacrifice them to fight a war that he hath decided to pursue, then why should the poor and those who give unto him his power be required to fight in this war for him? 41. And ye can know for a surety the righteous desires of any leader to wage war on another people, if that same leader is willing to sacrifice his own sons and daughters, even his own life, to fight the war that he hath caused. 42. And ye of the latter day should require this thing of any leader who go forth to war, and bringeth under conscription your sons and daughters that they might die for his cause. 43. And your wars shall not be righteous wars, but wars that are set up to protect the blessings that ye shall receive from Satan, who is the God in whom ye shall trust to fight your wars for you. 44. And after my own people, the Nephites, began to set their hearts upon the fine things of the world and the glories and honors of men, they began to follow the plan of Lucifer, which requireth them that they raise up a means of force to protect their riches and their families from their enemies. 45. And ye have the history of my people in the record that the Lord hath already caused to come forth among you. And if ye have read the record of my father, then ye would know of the many wars and the misery that my people have brought upon themselves because of their wickedness. 46. And now, this is the exact reason why my father was commanded by the Lord to include so much concerning these wars among the Nephites and the Lamanites, so that ye might learn from the mistakes that they have made. 47. And it shall come to pass that after all the Nephites are destroyed, the Lamanites shall have many wars among them for a time, but after many years they shall learn peace again and turn to the traditions of their fathers in the things that brought unto their fathers the peace and happiness of the Lord. 48. And they shall not have the spirit to guide them in these things, 
but they shall be guided by the light of Christ which is given to all the children of men throughout the whole earth. 49. And with the light of Christ, the Lamanites shall become once again a very peaceful and good-natured people who shall find much joy and harmony in following the light of Christ which helpeth them to know those things that bring them happiness and also those things which bring them misery. 50. And it shall come to pass that after many years of wars among them, they shall divide themselves upon the land according to their families and their tribes, and their economy shall not be based upon gold and silver, for these things shall come to mean nothing to them, as they were in the beginning in the time of Adam. 51. And they shall learn to take from the earth only that which they need to sustain their lives and they shall see that living in harmony with nature shall eliminate much of the misery that their fathers experienced because they would not live in this way. 52. And they shall come to an understanding that the family unit doth not bring peace and happiness, but that all should love each other and treat all as brothers and sisters. 53. Now I have explained unto you previously that the father commanded that his spirit be withheld from the earth during the periods in between the time and times and half of time, and that no prophets would be called to go forth among the people at these times. 54. But he did not command that there should not be righteousness among men, if there were those among them who understood the plan of the Father and lived by his commandments. 55. And after the Lamanites shall began to once again live in peace one with another, and when they shall put down their weapons of war, and make covenants among themselves that they will not go to war again, and take the life of another for any reason, yea, at this time Timothy and Methoni and Methoniha shall go forth upon the land among them, and begin to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ once again unto the people. 56. Now, if they did not preach unto this people, how would ye suppose that they should be taught the things of God? Neither did they do anything contrary to the will of the Father, during the time in between the times and half of time. 57. Behold, they shall teach the people according to their own languages, and the customs that they shall establish among them, which customs are not according to the holy order of the Son of God. 58. And it shall be these three Nephite apostles that shall be the means whereby the Lamanites shall become once again a peaceful and loving people, who shall live upon the earth according to the commandments of God. And truly, there shall not be a more righteous and peaceful people among all the nations of the earth. 59. And it shall come to pass that Timothy shall leave the land of our fathers, and cross the many seas to be among the other nations, so that he might do what he can to inspire others to use the light of Christ, which hath been in them since their birth into mortality, to find the truth, and follow the plan of the Father, and this he shall not do according to the holy order of the Son of God, which shall be taken from the earth at this time. 60. But Methoni and Methoni Hash shall stay for many years among the people of the land of our fathers, which is the same land that ye call in the latter days the Americas. 61. And it shall come to pass that as the people begin to prosper in peace and happiness, there shall arise some chief men among them who shall be influenced once again by the ways of Satan to build up great cities and highways, and these shall establish commerce that they might get gain. 62. And these Lamanites shall stay generally in the land southward, while the more peaceful of the Lamanites shall live in the land northward and also upon the isles of the oceans that are near unto the land of the Americas, as ye shall call it. 63. And it shall come to pass that the nations of the Gentiles shall not know of the Americas, until the time just before the Lord alloweth Satan to exercise his authority and power. And Satan shall be allowed to cause the nations that belong to the great and abominable church to discover the land that the Lord hath hid from them. 64. And this is one thing that Lucifer complained of to the Father, 
even that he did not have the finest parts of the earth in which to bring forth his plan and bring happiness to those who would follow him. 65. And for this reason, the Lord shall allow Satan to inspire the explorers of the great nations of the Gentiles to discover the land of the Americas, which is the land of my fathers. 66. And now, I have read in the words of the brother of Jared that which ye perceive is the meaning of the words of Nephi, which he wrote concerning the vision that he had of the latter days, in which he wrote, saying, And it came to pass that I looked and beheld many waters, and they divided the Gentiles from the seed of my brethren. 67. And it came to pass that the angel said unto me, Behold, the wrath of God is upon the seed of thy brethren. And I looked, and beheld a man among the Gentiles, who was separated from the seed of my brethren by the many waters. And I beheld the Spirit of God, that it came down, and wrought upon the man, and he went forth upon the many waters, even unto the seed of my brethren, who were in the promised land. 68. And it came to pass that I beheld the Spirit of God, that it wrought upon other Gentiles, and they went forth out of captivity upon the many waters. 69. And it came to pass that I beheld many multitudes of the Gentiles upon the land of promise, and I beheld the wrath of God, that it was upon the seed of my brethren, and they were scattered before the Gentiles, and were smitten. And I beheld the Spirit of the Lord, that it was upon the Gentiles, and they did prosper, and obtain the land for their inheritance. And I beheld that they were white, and exceedingly fair, and beautiful, like unto my people before they were slain. 70. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld that the Gentiles, who had gone forth out of captivity, did humble themselves before the Lord, and the power of the Lord was with them. 71. And I beheld that their mother Gentiles were gathered together upon the waters, and upon the land also, to battle against them. And I beheld that the power of God was with them, and also that the wrath of God was upon all those who were gathered together against them to battle. 72. And I, Nephi, beheld that the Gentiles who had gone out of captivity were delivered by the power of God out of the hands of all other nations. 73. And now, ye would believe that this man of whom Nephi hath written is the explorer that shall be known among you as a bearer of Christ, like unto the final prophet of the latter days. But this is not the man of whom the words of Nephi referreth. And this Christopher is not like unto the final of the two prophets, who shall bring this record to you in the latter days. 74. For behold, this explorer shall be sent forth to discover the land of my fathers, for the sole purpose to get gain for himself and those who shall send him, even one of the great nations of the Gentiles that belongeth to the great and abominable church, whose desires are the gold and the silver and the silks and the scarlets and the fine twined linen and the precious clothing and the harlots. 75. And this was the only purpose of this explorer, even that he might get these things for himself and for those who shall send him. 76. And he shall come upon the land of my fathers at the time when the Lamanites shall be a peaceful and a good-natured people, who shall give freely of all that they possess, yea, they shall give of their gold and their silver and all those things which are found upon the land of promise which shall have no value placed upon them. 77. And this explorer shall kill them in their innocence, and take them in captivity back to those who sent him to get gain. And the Lamanites shall suffer exceedingly because of these things. 78. And it shall come to pass that many of the Lamanites shall throw themselves into the depths of the sea, so that they might not have to suffer death by the hand of the Gentiles who shall overcome them. 79. And in great wickedness shall the nations of the Gentiles overrun the land of the Lamanites, and destroy their peace, and their homes, and their righteousness. 80. 
And now, I ask of ye of the latter days who think that the man of whom Nephi hath written is this explorer Christopher of whom I have mentioned. Yea, how can this be the man who was inspired by the Spirit of God to come across the waters and destroy the Lamanites for the want of gold and silver and the precious things of the earth, which are the desire of the great and abominable church? 81. And how is it that ye can believe this when Nephi hath written that these Gentiles, who shall be wrought upon by the Holy Spirit, shall come forth out of captivity? 82. Behold, this explorer Christopher did not come forth out of captivity, nor did those who followed him. Behold, they crossed the many waters because of greed, and the want, and desire for money, and the desires of the great and abominable church. Now this is not the man of whom Nephi hath written. 83. And the captivity which Nephi hath mentioned is the captivity of the souls of the children of men by the great and abominable church which shall rise up among the Gentiles. 84. And I have already explained unto you that the Father shall not allow the Spirit to inspire the children of men until the beginning of the half of time as I have explained it unto you. 85. And this half of time shall not come to pass until a later day, during the latter days than that day that the land of my father shall be discovered by the other nations of the Gentiles. 86. And if ye read all the words of Nephi, ye shall see that he hath written, And it came to pass that I beheld many multitudes of the Gentiles upon the land of promise. 87. Now, in the day that the people of the other nations of the Gentiles shall discover this land, there shall not be many Gentiles upon the land. And when they come upon the land, they shall not be coming forth out of captivity. 88. But the things which Nephi beheld were an overview of the whole history of the nation of the United States, and that which shall come to pass upon it. 89. And those who shall come forth out of captivity are those who shall come forth after this great nation shall be established as a power among all other nations of the earth. 90. And the United States shall be established as a separate nation from their mother Gentiles, or the other nations from which shall come forth many people out of the captivity that they feel holdeth them bound in their freedom to worship God according to the dictates of their own conscience. 91. For among the nations of the Gentiles, the power shall be held in the hands of the leaders of the religions established among them, who shall keep the hearts of all the children of men in the bondage of their power and their desires. And this is what Nephi meant when he said that they shall come forth out of captivity. 92. And when the United States shall begin to prosper, there shall be many upon the land who are humble and who want no part of the great and abominable church, but only want peace and happiness, which they shall expect that they shall receive under the protection of these United States. 93. And as they come forth upon the land, they shall scatter the Lamanites who remain, and who once again turned against the counsel that was given unto them, even that they shall take up arms against the Gentiles to slay them, and drive them out of the land of their fathers. 94. And Nephi saw that the wrath of God was upon them, because they did not do those things which were taught unto them by their fathers, who had received their instruction from the three Nephites who dwelt among them for many years. 95. And when they rebelled against the message of peace, which was testified of by the light of Christ within them, they shall be destroyed by the sword, as shall be all nations that live by the sword. 96. And this man of whom Nephi made mention was a great reformer of religion, who prayed mightily unto God that he might leave the nations of the Gentiles and find a land where he could worship God according to the dictates of his own conscience, which was the light of Christ that was within him. 97. And he crossed the many waters, and came unto the land of promise, 
and began to preach that which he felt was the gospel of Christ unto the Lamanites. And this man was prepared by the Lord through the ministrations of Timothy, who had left Methoni and Methoniha, and crossed the great oceans until he came to the land from which Lehi came in the beginning. 98. And I was about to write his name in this record, but the Spirit of the Lord hath forbidden me in this thing, because of the contention that would arise because of his name and the things which he shall accomplish among the Gentiles in the land of promise in the latter days. 99. And it sufficeth me to say that this man shall not be an explorer, as many of you suppose, but shall be a great reformer of religion, that shall do that which shall establish a foundation of much good in the latter days. 100. And ye shall see that the rest of the words of Nephi shall be fulfilled in that which he prophesied concerning any other nation that might rise up against this great nation, that any nation that riseth up against it shall be destroyed. And this shall come to pass according to the power of God, or the knowledge that God hath allowed Satan to use to bring forth his plan in its fullness. End of chapter 84